Hey guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, hi my name is Janelle and I upload new videos every Wednesday and Friday. In today's video, today I'm going to show you guys my top two in every makeup category. Yeah, in order to make the top two, it probably takes a lot because I do try tons and tons of products but there are a few staples that I always revert back to and that I always just are like my go-to for special occasions and things like that. So that's what I really try to consider when making this video. So guys, I was wearing this top in the look that I created for this makeup look, but it was so hard to take off. Like this piece right here, this cool little cutout, you legit have to like stretch out and put over your head. It doesn't detach. So yeah, if you see me wearing the same exact outfit in a previous video, it's because I am and it was too hard to take off. Before you leave though, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Don't forget to check me out on Instagram and TikTok. And without any more rambling, let's get into the video. All right, so I have my little notebook right here with my notes. This notebook is so cute. It kind of like is like a Louis Vuitton type of vibe, but it's from Amazon. And I've been loving it for just like jotting down video ideas, making to-do lists really great so if you're interested in that i'll leave it linked down below and it also comes with this really cute pen i do plan on doing another amazon favorites video too so um yeah if you want to see that consider subscribing i'm gonna start off with like primers foundation try to go in order some of them also not all the products i will have right in front of me some of them i like ran out of and i haven't repurchased because i wanted to try something different but i regret trying something different because i love that product so just keep that in mind i'll insert pictures and stuff on the screen so for primers my top two primers are my elf poreless putty primer this i love pretty much the most out of all my primers any other high-end primer this is my go-to. I really love this primer because it smooths out the skin, but it keeps your makeup on all day. I also love this on days when I'm not wearing any makeup because it literally creates a filter on the skin. I love the kind, the universal one, because it's not too mattifying, but it's not too like shiny and dewy skin. It's not gonna dry it out, nothing too shiny. Absolutely stunning. I highly recommend this primer. And then the next primer that I really like, this is more geared toward drier skin. It's the Milk Hydro Grip Primer. It'll control shine, but still create that tacky base for makeup to stick to. And that's why I absolutely love it. I also love mixing this with other primers. So sometimes I'll just use this in my T-zone, but then use my elf poreless putty everywhere else or it's a really good primer to like mix in with other products this is a new discovery but it has been a true game changer and it is the tula skincare filter primer this is like magic in a little bottle it's insane i like that it comes with a little pump and they have three different shades they have one for fair skin one for medium skin and one for deep skin and it comes out like a cream right so you're like why would they have different colors but when you rub it in it will literally like match the tone of your skin and create a filter of color. So if you have any hyperpigmentation on the skin, breakouts, it'll really lightly just graze over all of that. So then by the time when you go in with your foundation, you already have that kind of like filter over everything. But not only does it add that filter of color over it, it also blurs the skin, but it's still hydrating. I find that a lot of blurring primers can like not hydrate the skin enough and then your foundation just sits on top instead of like really meshing in with the primer that's underneath of it. So foundation was another category. But I feel like I had to pick three just because they're for different purposes. I also want to do another drugstore version of this. <laughs> so hard to just narrow it down. Okay, if I was stuck on a desert island and I can only have one foundation, this is the foundation I would take with me. It's the Dior Backstage Foundation. This was a newer discovery for me and I've been hooked ever since. It gives you a soft glow, but it's not too glowy. It literally blurs your skin it will blur out any like large pores i get a lot of texture in this area it's a nice medium coverage but you could totally layer it up and get more of like a medium to full coverage it is not cakey at all it melts into the skin beautifully and just looks like a second layer of skin it's very hard to get all three of those in one something that isn't cakey something that will blur the skin something that's hydrating but not too hydrating and something that will wear really nice throughout the day and this hits all those marks, which is why this is like number one on my list. Then my number two foundation, I was hesitant about including, but I had to because it is one of those products that I always go back to. It's the Giorgio Armani Luminous Soap Foundation. This foundation is so pricey. However, this 
truly gives your skin like a second layer of skin finish. Again, you get that glow, but it's not too glowy. You can build up the coverage on this and it won't get cakey. It wears beautifully throughout the day. Like as your oils break through, it doesn't get oily. It just kind of like is super balanced. It doesn't feel heavy on the skin. It photographs beautifully. This like truly hits all the marks, which is why I had to include this. And it's one of those foundations that like if I'm out of it, I need to purchase another one because I need to have it on hand in my collection just in case. Yeah. And lastly, I wanted to talk about the NARS Radiant Longwear Foundation. This I recently re-fell in love with. This is great because it's going to give you more coverage than the other two. So if you have more problematic skin, this will be the foundation for you. It has more coverage, but it's not more cakey than the other two. It still melts into the skin. It doesn't sit on top. The consistency isn't too thick. It wears beautifully throughout the day. It's super easy to blend out. It truly hits all the marks. Like it's really hard to get full coverage, satiny finish that's not too matte, not too oily something that will wear nice throughout the day and give all that coverage. Like that's really hard to hit all those marks. And this does that. I hope I'm making sense. I'm terrible at explaining and talking about products. So I don't even know why I have a YouTube channel. So next up on the topic of concealers, I had to talk about the Born This Way concealer. This one I'm out of, but I saved just for this video because I love it so much and I need to get another one. Notice what I love about all the products that I've talked about so far. I like a product that's balanced and this is balanced. Not too matte, not too shiny, not too cakey, but gives good coverage, satin finish, wears nice throughout the day. Those are all the categories I like in my face products, which is why I sound redundant. These products all fit that mark, which is why they're in this video. This I find gives the perfect amount of coverage underneath of the eye. It doesn't crease, though it gives you good coverage that it still looks good on bare skin. It's really hard to find concealers that are going to give you that coverage that you can wear on its own without a foundation. And that's super important to me because on a lot of days, I don't want to wear a full face of makeup. I just want to spot conceal underneath of my eyes, any blemishes and be out the door. And this concealer is perfect for that. I love using a concealer like this with the like Tula primer and boom, that's my makeup for the day. This is also the concealer that I used on my wedding day, except I mixed it with the MAC 24 hour concealer which I don't like on its own, but mixed with that concealer, that is the perfect concealer concoction. Then next up, I had to talk about the Pat McGrath Sublime Concealer. Concealer is revolutionary in my opinion, because this is the most opaque full coverage concealer that I own. So especially during allergy season or in the winter time when my under eyes are super, super dark and I need something to really just eliminate that, I grab this concealer, but the more amazing part about it is that, again, it's still hydrating. So it's not gonna be full coverage and then leave your under eyes looking dry and crepey and just like gross and cakey. Since it's a more hydrating finish, it still leaves a natural finish underneath your eye while giving a super opaque full coverage finish. It wears beautifully throughout the day. It doesn't crease. A little goes a long way with this product. If you need something super full coverage, you have really dark under eye area, but you don't want it to be dry and cakey, this concealer is for you. It, it's truly amazing. And then last but not least, I was hesitant on sharing this. When I was trying to think of products for this video, I wanted to think of products that I'm like, okay, if I run out of it, are they products that I need back in my collection because I always like going back to them because they're very dependable. And those are the products that I wanted to include. And Tarte Shape Shape is one of those products. I feel like Tarte Shape Tape has kind of gotten beaten up lately because everyone's into more natural makeup. But what is on this? What the heck? Is that lash glue? Anyways, like I was saying, everybody's super into very natural glowy makeup and keeping it very skin-like, but you can still totally get that with the Tarte Shape Tape. And that's why I love it because yes, it's going to be full coverage. Yes, it's more of like a satin matte finish, but you don't always have to layer on so much like people were doing for so long. Like doing that full on triangle on your eye with this concealer is so unnecessary. If you apply this on the back of your hand and then apply it with a just like regular concealer brush and lay it where you want it, you can get a very natural finish. It'll blur your under eyes. It'll cover it. It's not going to crease on you. It'll wear beautifully throughout the day. And again, it's not going to be cakey because you just use less of it, which is why I love it. And this is also one of my go-to concealers for if I know I'm gonna have a really long day, like if, or if I know I have to be somewhere earlier in the day and I have to do my makeup for that and I have another occasion super later in the day and I won't have time to redo my makeup, this is a concealer I use because it truly stays put all day. When you're using this concealer, you want to use an eye cream 
and that will also help it not look as like dry or cakey or anything like that. When it comes to cream bronzer slash contour, these two are my favorite and funny enough, they are both from the drugstore and they are both under $7. Fun fact, I made a TikTok on this contour and it got like half a million views. It's so bomb though. So this is actually a foundation but I just get it in the darkest shade. It's in the shade 355 Cocoa. Now, the only downfall about this is that this is the darkest shade that they have, which to me is not dark enough at all. So that's like the really sucky part. The other product I'm gonna show you though has way more of a wide variety of colors and it gives you a very similar effect. What I love about this one is that it blends out so easily. It doesn't look patchy. I hate a lot of cream contour slash like bronzers and things like that can tend to like skip on you or look blotchy. This does not do that at all. The next one I really love is my e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer in the shade Deep Caramel. It is, it's a nice like satin creamy finish. This one is going to have a little bit more coverage to it. So I just like to put some on the back of my hand, work it into a brush like this or something, and then apply it to my face. And then that way it doesn't go on too like intense or heavy. This works beautifully throughout the day since it's the hydrating camo concealer. It is going to give you a nice like satin buttery finish. It looks great on bare skin too if you work it into a brush and then apply it on the face. But yeah, these two are my favorite for cream contour. Moving on to bronzers. Ooh, I actually have three. This is another one where I had to talk about three because two was just not enough. So the first bronzer that I'm like is an absolute must to have for everybody it is the og mac give me sun bronzer it's a super pretty like warm terracotta shade so whenever i apply this on my skin it literally just looks like i went outside got some natural sun i like applying this one with a fluffy brush because it is very pigmented and very warm but it melts into the skin beautifully it's not a super like matte chalky bronzer it doesn't skip on you it doesn't look muddy this is a part of the mineralized line so they start off as creams and then they bake them into a powder which is why they melt into the skin so beautifully and then the next bronzer that i am just so in love with and obsessed with is my hourglass ambient lighting bronzer in the shade bronzient lumiere i don't know i'll link everything down below but it looks like this and it does have a soft sheen in it, which I love for the winter time when my skin is more dry. It's a little more sheer, but you can build it up. And this just gives you the perfect all over bronzy glow without looking like straight up shimmer on your cheeks or on your face. I normally always steer clear from like shimmery bronzers. I've never liked them. I was just hooked. The way it melts into the skin, gives that soft glow. Without looking heavy, this looks stunning on bare skin with no foundation on too because you can build it up or wear it more sheer. But this is also my favorite product to use all over my eyes as an eyeshadow for like my everyday makeup look. This is the product that I use for my eyes. Such a beautiful product. This is also great for like brides. It's a great product to have in your makeup kit. And then the last bronzer that I have been obsessed with is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer. This one is in the shade medium. I also have the shade dark. That's how you know I like a product when I need it in multiple colors. I love this one for my skin tone because it's not too warm, not too cool. The dark one is great for more like richer olive skin. This is a beautiful matte bronzer without looking too like chalky. It doesn't skip on the skin. It blends out beautifully. And yeah, I have just been truly loving this bronzer along with like so many other of Makeup by Mario's products lately. All right, moving on to powders. If I was stuck on a desert island and I could only bring one powder with me, this would be the powder. And it is my OG MAC Studio Fix Foundation Powder. I love this powder so much. It is so beautiful, stunning to wear on its own. It's stunning to kind of like buff over your face when you finish your makeup. If you want to create a filter on your skin, you can apply it with a fluffy brush like this. And I'll actually even show you guys. The fluffy brush like this slightly uh, pick up some product. And if you just go over everything, do you see the filter that it literally leaves your skin? It's great for touching up with with a large brush like this. I also love getting like brighter um, colors in this foundation powder as like an under eye brightener to add more coverage. I also love getting in a darker shade as bronzer. Such a versatile, beautiful makeup product. It also works great for all skin types. This is such a stunning product. Next powder. Oh, by the way, I was breaking up my powders into two categories, pressed powders and then loose powders. So I'm gonna talk about pressed powders right now. Pressed powder that I absolutely love is my number seven, 
Perfect Light Powder. This is in the shade Medium. This is gonna be less coverage than the MAC Studio Fix. This is gonna be more sheer. It'll smooth out the skin. It'll mattify it a little bit without drying out your skin too much. Create a filter over the skin. It seriously locks your makeup in place all day. Both of those powders do, but this one in particular really does. Like I found that this made my makeup mask proof. And the best part about this product is that it is from the drugstore. I think it's like $13 and it's just stunning. It's not gonna make your skin look cakey. It's not gonna feel heavy on your skin. You can apply it with a dense brush or a fluffy brush. It's great to keep in your bag to touch up with. Definitely recommend this powder. Moving on to loose powders. There are two that I wanna talk about. First loose powder that I love and I've repurchased, I think twice now. It's my Hourglass Veil translucent powder. I love this powder because again, it hits those categories that I like for my face products of not being too matte, but mattifying enough to keep the makeup on all day while still letting your natural glow and any like cream highlights and all that shine through. It doesn't look cakey or crepey. It's very fine, but it does add a nice like brightness, especially if you pack on a little bit more to the under eye. I feel like you're able to bake with this powder without your skin just looking so dry and just intense and heavy. It's just a beautiful product. I find that Hourglass makes really great face products. They're really good at creating that balance of a little bit of shine, a little bit of matteness, wearing nice throughout the day, looking skin-like, but just looking also very angelic and glowy. I also find it works great for all skin types, all like different ages and textures of skin. And then the next powder that I really like, I think it's honestly on this list because it reminds me a lot of the Hourglass one, except it's a fraction of the cost. I've talked about it a ton on my channel and it is my Koki translucent powder. Love this powder, again, very fine, but you can also like, if you want to bake with it, it'll give a little bit more brightness and coverage, but it's not going to be cakey. It wears beautifully throughout the day. And the best part is it's only $9. All right, moving on to blushes. First blush, I've talked about so much on my channel. I'm gonna talk about it again. If there was one blush that they were like, you can only take one blush with you. It's the only blush you can ever use again. It would 100% be my MAC Mineralized Blush in the shade Dainty. This is just such a stunning blush. It's like a nice, baby doll pink it's not too cool tone like i'll show you it up against another blush that's super cool tone and see this is a super blue tone blush this is dainty it has a little bit of warmth it works great for my complexion it looks stunning on more fair complexions it also looks good as like a highlight almost on deeper complexions like if you put a deeper blush and then layer a little bit of this on top it's beautiful like that it has a slight gold flex throughout it which just makes it kind of melt and mesh with so many different skin tones. Wears so nice throughout the day. Again, it's the mineralized line at MAC, so they start off as a cream, bake them, they turn into a powder, which is why they melt and sit on the skin beautifully. And then the second one that I'm loving is my, it's actually a newer blush, but it's the Patrick Ta blush in She's That Girl. And it's right here. To me, this literally reminds me so much of the Dainty blush, just a little bit more matte. They're very similar. This is just a little bit more matte and a little bit more warm. It's like the pigmentation on this is beautiful. And I also love this because it comes with the cream on top, but I'm gonna do a separate category for my top cream blushes. And actually we can start off with this one because this is one of them. I love this cream blush because it melts into the skin. You can wear it on top of like already powdered skin and it's not gonna break up the makeup like a lot of cream blushes tend to do. The color of it is so stunning. And yeah, I think that this blush alone, this duo and just the cream alone could work with so many different skin tones, whether you are more fair or a little bit deeper than me. And then the second cream blush that I am in love with. Honestly, I think I need another one because I'm almost out and the thought of being out of this scares me. Just kidding, I'm being dramatic. But it's a stunning blush. It is the NARS uh, Liquid Blush. You can apply it on bare skin with no makeup and it'll just give that like pinched cheek look. But you can also apply this on top of a full face of makeup and it's not going to bunch up or break up on you. It's going to literally just add an extra like creamy texture on top of powdered skin. It's beautiful. The color of this one is really nice. Again, I'll leave everything linked down below. But you can see it's kind of in that same color family as like the Dainty and that Patrick Ta blush. For eyeliner, it was really hard to choose. I don't put a lot of thought into my eyeliners. However, there is one eyeliner that has truly stood out to me as far as like the texture and the finish goes. And then the second eyeliner, I've just been obsessed with for years based on the color. 
So that's what I'm going to speak to when I talk about these products. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is this Makeup by Mario Super Black Eyeliner. I recently picked this up. It's the best eyeliner that I have ever used in my whole life. It stays put all day. It doesn't run on you. Literally after scrubbing my face, it was still inside of my waterline. I woke up the next day, it was still there. Like you legit need an eye makeup remover to remove it, but it's the blackest liner that I own too. Like look how just smooth and creamy that goes on. And then it also comes with a little brush to like smudge, which is really nice. This is just a great staple eyeliner to own. I feel like everybody needs a rich black eyeliner just for certain looks. And this is the one that won't disappoint that will really give you that pigment. And then the second one is my MAC Costa Rica eyeliner. I actually just opened up a new one because my other one I just threw out and it was probably like six years old. It was definitely, it was well expired. Warm chocolate brown. I feel like this looks beautiful on brown eyes because that contrast up against like how like red it is, it just makes, brings out more of like a honey tone in the eye, but it's also so stunning on blue and green eyes because the contrast just really makes the eyes pop. It truly is such a good staple liner to own because it works well on so many different skin tones, eye colors, things like that. I also love all of the other MAC eye coals but I like more so like the eye coals for like browns and like there's another color called Prunella that I like that's more of like a purpley tone. For black though, I would definitely go with the Makeup by Mario one just cause it's super rich and pigmented and it will stay put all day. When it comes to mascara, there's only one that truly stands out to me above all the other ones. And then there's another one that stands out to me but I no longer own it, but I wanna talk about. Both of them are, are by Lancome. Both of them I discovered when I worked at Lancome. I would've never thought to spend more money on a mascara, but they're one of those mascaras that once you try, you're like, dang it, my lashes like don't look this great with any other product. So the first one is the Lancome Idol. I'm sorry, this one I did not try when I worked at Lancome. This one I recently tried and fell in love with, but it's the Lancome Lash Idol Mascara. Gives so much volume, so much separation. It doesn't flake throughout the day. Your eyes can water and it's not gonna crumble. It can rain and it's not gonna crumble. They'll stay curled and lifted. I'll fall asleep with some residue of this on my lashes and I'll wake up, my lashes are still lifted and curled. It's not waterproof, but it just wears as if it was a waterproof mascara without damaging your eyelashes. And I love it for that, it's so good. Then the second one I used for the longest was the Lancome Hypnos Drama Mascara. That one is great if you like a very like more bold, voluminous, slightly clumpy, but not disgustingly clumpy lash. It'll give you a lot of length, curl, and a ton of volume. And that one just looks beautiful on the eyes. All right, moving on. When it comes to eyeshadow palettes, this one was hard. Three are kind of tied. Two are tied, and then the last one I had to incorporate because it has its own reasons for being talked about. First one, my Patrick Ta Major Dimensions eyeshadow palette. This was a new discovery for me. <gasps> no. Oh, I forgot about that Eyeshadows are so hard. You know what, I'm gonna have to knock out one of them. And I think I know which one I'm gonna have to knock out. This is so difficult. So first one, Patrick Ta Major Dimensions Eyeshadow Palette. This is one where I know whenever I'm traveling or going away, whether it's a weekend trip or a longer trip, I will take this palette with me because it has all the colors that I love on my complexion and that I feel most confident in. It also has like the most colors that look, I feel like really good on all like skin tones, eye colors, occasions, things like that. I like that it comes with two cream um, eyeshadows and then you have like lighter shades and deeper shades. It's just such a stunning palette. It's a great palette for brides too. So it's also a great palette just to have in your kit. Condensed, the packaging is nice. I just can't say enough good things about this palette. I truly think it was worth every penny. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. Initially I had the Patrick Ta, my Natasha Denona gold palette here. Here. You guys just see that? This whole thing just came out and this is not a cheap palette. Okay, so clearly this is not on the list anymore. Do love this palette, love the way the products like blend and all that. And then the last one was gonna be my Jaclyn Hill Volume 1 palette. This is a palette I used on my wedding day. It has every color that you could use to create any look underneath of the sun. This palette is one that I definitely can't live without is because for one, it has everything that I need to create infinite amount of makeup looks. I love how it has so many blending colors and so many different undertones to pair with, like whether you wanna do more of a cool tone look, more of a warm tone look. You have gold, you have bronzes, you have a really nice black. 
The only thing missing in this palette is like a matte creamy white color, but other than that, this palette is truly perfection. Such a good palette to own, to have in your makeup kit, and just a palette that will make you feel at peace when you're traveling because you're like, okay, cool. I have everything that I need to create any look under the sun. Then the last palette, I almost forgot about because Tati went MIA for so long, but now she's back and I'm so happy. And it is the Tati Beauty Volume 1 Eyeshadow Palette. Now the thing with influencers is that a lot of people can have different opinions about them, but there's no denying that both of these uh, influencers put out some bomb products. Like Tati really did that here. This one is completely gone because I love it as a transition shade, but this is a great palette because you legit have everything. You have your glitters, you have more smoky tones, you have your lighter tones, you have your inner corner highlight, you have your matte all over lid shades, you have just like such a variety of products and not to mention the shadows in this palette perform like the Patrick Ta ones, they perform like the Natasha Denona ones, like the quality is truly here. Jaclyn Hill and the Morphe palette, those shadows are good quality but you can tell that they're just like a step under the quality in this palette and in like Patrick Ta, Natasha Denona, I mean they have to be because that palette's only like $40 for all those shades. Now this one is $48. You do get slightly less shades, but you still get that variety and you literally get like the feeling of a luxury palette without spending $68 up to like $100 on a palette like you would on a Natasha Denona one. And I love it. Not to mention this color is like my favorite eyeshadow shade of all time. I love this palette so much. I'm so happy Tati is back. So now when it comes to highlights, there are two palettes that I can't live without. The two highlighters that I can't live without are one, my MAC Hyper Real Glow Palette in the shade Flash and Awe. Picked up a new one recently. My other one, I hit pan on this color here. But what I love about this palette is that it melts into the skin. You can get a beaming highlight finish or you can apply it with like a fluffy brush and just get that lit from within finish. The powders in this palette also started off as a cream. They bake them into a powder, but they don't bake them for as long as they bake the mineralized products. So this really gives your skin that like wet, juicy finish. So I love um, the gold Hyper Real palette, but I love this one in particular because you still have like a golden tone, but then you have your lighter shades to mix in it. So this palette in particular works great for all different skin tones from like fair to maybe like a little bit more deeper in olive than me, but then the gold one of this palette looks great on really deep, uh, rich skin tone, so I love it for that. Yeah, you cannot go wrong with these Hyper Real Glow palettes. They're also amazing to have in your kit because they're super sleek. You have several different shades. Again, they work well on a variety of people. The next palette is my Charlotte Tilbury Hyper Real Gold highlighting palette. I lost one of the shades in this palette, RIP. This palette is super expensive and it's so tiny, but it is great to travel with, which is why I like how compact it is. And I also love how like it's a hard cover. So I get scared to travel sometimes with the Hyper Real Glow one because since it's like a cardboard packaging, I get scared it'll crumble. This one though, the only reason I lost this one is because it fell on like hardwood floor. What I love about this palette is it comes, for one, when you buy it new, it comes with like a bronze color here which looks great on obviously deeper skin tones, but then you can also like layer in these two if you're more of like a medium skin tone like me. If you're more fair, you can use more of these two and then like a hint of that. So again, it's super versatile because you can like kind of customize the amount of each color that you use depending on your skin tone. But then what I love most about this is that it gives you the most refined, fine highlight it literally just looks like you are lit from within. It's a little bit more fine than the Hyper Real one. It looks beautiful on bare skin. It looks beautiful on a full face. It doesn't look chunky or glittery. It is probably the most stunning highlight. No, it is the most stunning highlight that I own. I love it so much. I do want to purchase another one of these just so I can have this bronze shade again, but it's so expensive that I'm like, let me just try to finish what I can with this and then get another one. All right, so when it comes to brow products, I don't have one of the products, but the first one is the Benefit Precisely My Brow. That is my favorite brow pencil of all time. Every time I run out of it and I pick up like either a cheaper alternative or I'm like, oh, let me try a different high-end option, I instantly regret it because I it just nothing compares to that one. I love how it fills in the brows. I love how precise the little point is to create those hair-like strokes, but it's still like it doesn't take forever to blend in. It wears beautifully throughout the day. I find a lot of times brow pencils tend to get this weird like bunchy, patchy look on me. 
and that one does not do that I love it so much. Then the next product is not a pencil, but it is a brow product that I cannot live without and I love. And it is the MAC Shape and Shade Brow Tint. This is in the shade Stud. I also like it in the shade Spiked. This is my favorite brow pen ever. I've tried the Anastasia one. I've tried the NYX one. This like stands out above all of them because for one of how it wears throughout the day, I'm huge on that. I hate when like halfway through the day the tail of my brow is like gone or patchy and I also love the applicator on it it's a brush tip instead of being like a felt tip so you can really create those hair like strokes with it I also like it because it has a little powder on the other side to kind of like blend through however I don't use a powder on my brows but I do like it for whenever I want to do like a soft wing I'll literally use a brow pen as a wing and then take this and uh, the powder side and like smoke it out. So I just also love how it's versatile. And then the next two categories, I'm not gonna talk about like colors or anything in specific. I'm just gonna talk about two brands that I like to purchase when I'm getting stuff from this category. And the first one is lip pencils. So when it comes to lip pencils, there are two brands that I purchase all of my lip pencils from for the most part. I just find that the price point is really good. So when it comes to high end for lip pencils, MAC is my go-to. They have like the perfect formula where it is matte, so it'll stay put all day, but it's still creamy enough to where it will glide on the lip, but not too creamy to where it's gonna like run on you. The color selections that they have are perfect. They have some of my staple lip pencils that I absolutely cannot be without. And yeah, you just cannot go wrong with MAC lip pencils. And the second lip pencils that I love to purchase from are NYX. NYX. Honestly, I feel like the reason why I love NYX pencils is because they pretty much did a copycat of MAC lip pencils. They have a lot of like color dupes. The formula is so similar. It's some. It's super hard to like tell the difference. NYX one I think is like $4. MAC lip pencils are $8. NYX lip pencils, they do come a little bit shorter so you do get a little bit less product. MAC lip pencils, they come at a good size and they'll last you a very long time. But yeah. Those are the two that I recommend whenever you're looking for good lip pencils. And then when it comes to lipsticks, again, MAC takes the cake. I love MAC bullet lipsticks. I love their matte formula. It's not too drying as long as you don't get the retro matte finish. If you ever tried MAC Ruby Woo, that's their retro matte. It feels like chalk on your lips. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about their regular matte lipsticks like Velvet Teddy, things like that. That formula is really nice. They also, their satin formula is beautiful. Their lusters are really beautiful. The color selection that they have, I feel like it's unbeatable compared to so many other brands. They have that perfect balance because it's that high-end lipstick that's gonna wear beautifully throughout the day, but the price point is not like heart-wrenching. Like $30 on a lipstick to me is a little bit excessive. Their lipsticks I believe are $19, so again, a little bit more pricey, but you get what you pay for. You're gonna get really good quality and you're also gonna get some of the most beautiful finishes and colors. The next group that I love to purchase for when it comes to like lip products is Maybelline. I love Maybelline matte lipsticks. I love their creamier lipsticks. I also love their uh, lifter glosses. Those are beautiful. So I feel like for both brands, when it comes to their lip category, they kill it with like lip glosses, lipsticks, lip pencils. Don't sleep on your $5 Maybelline lipsticks. I feel like they perform like a lot of high-end lip colors and the color selection and variety that they have is beautiful too. Then lastly, when it comes to setting sprays, there are two that I can't live without, MAC Fix Plus. If you haven't tried MAC Fix Plus, you need to. This is the only setting spray that I feel like really melts all the makeup into your skin. It has glycerin in it, so it really just like melts it all together. It also has cucumber extract to really soothe the skin and it feels super refreshing on. It's just such a staple setting spray to own. I also love using this first and then using like a super long wearing setting spray on top of it like the Irma Decay one or the one that I'm about to talk about. This is like a good base setting spray because I feel like if you just go straight in with like the Urban Decay All Nighter or a super long wearing setting spray and you don't go in with something like this first, it can tend to make your makeup look more dry and more heavy. Whereas like this will melt everything together first. If you're layering a bunch of powders, it'll make it all just become one on your skin. And then once that dries, you spray your long wearing one and your face is like good to go and it looks flawless. If you have not tried MAC Fix Plus, this is your sign, go try it. Then the next one is my favorite for like a more long wearing setting spray. It's something that I like to use on top of the MAC Fix Plus. Again, I've tried so many, but this one works amazing. It keeps my makeup in place all day and it's only $8 from the drugstore. It's the Maybelline Lasting Fix 
setting spray. In fact, Maybelline is owned by L'Oreal. L'Oreal also owns Urban Decay. And when I think about it, I feel like this is pretty much like the Urban Decay All Nighter, just in a smaller bottle and different packaging. Flat Maybelline on it, and all of a sudden you don't need to charge $26 for the setting spray. That's what I love about this, is that you get that kind of like Urban Decay All Nighter setting spray, but for so much more affordable, this will literally keep your makeup on all day. It makes your makeup mask proof. You can also spray it in the morning when you finish your makeup. Instead of like touching up with more makeup, you can spray it in the middle of the day just as like preventative measures to keep it on longer. And then you can spray it again in the evening. And then if you have occasions later on in the evening, your makeup is... All right, you guys, they're upset for this video. My camera's about to die. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Let me know in the comments down below some of your top makeup favorites. I love you guys. I pray you all stay safe and I'll see you guys next time. Bye. Oh, 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 oh,